So we promised you something very, very special and today we're going to deliver. We are in Geneva, Switzerland. Hi, Jacob. Hi. How Welcome. are you? Welcome, Michael. Thank you for coming. How fun All is this going to gonna be? Oh, it's going to be great. We're going to take the helicopter to Neuchâtel and uh, see the factories. I think you're going to have a lot of fun. I don't it? think anyone's ever had cameras inside the factories before. So this is going to be a first for you guys. Very educational, very fun. Yeah. And uh, we're excited. Me too. Me this too. is our ride. Yes, sir. I got you a helicopter, so it's uh, more convenient for you. Nice helicopter. Let's go. So this is going to be either like a two or a three part series. It's all the different aspects of how Jacob & Co watches are made. And we're going to three different facilities, three different factories. And this is incredible. And it's raining. So let's go. So this is majorly exciting. This is the first time that cameras have been inside the factory. We are here with Alexandra, who is the director of operations Hello. of the factory, with a bunch of crystal cases. And what are we looking at? Where are we? We are in La Chaux de Fonds in Switzerland, a city with many, many producers of uh, watch parts. And you make exclusively the, the, the cases here, these crystal cases, and I see all sorts of things. Here we are specialized in a very complicated uh, sapphire parts. One of uh, our main partner is uh, Jacob & Co. Um, we are working together since many years and uh, we have produced for them many complicated pieces. What are we looking at here? Here you have many many mm, types of uh, models that we have produced for them and you have here the first steps of the sapphire production. We produce our Ralph sapphire it's a, it's a growth that we make and for this growth you start with very special powder that we produce from a mineral and with this powder we will make a carrot growth. No, so... <coughs> and how is that? Is that through high pressure and high temperature? It's very high temperature. It's uh, more than 2000 degrees uh, to make it, uh, to make the growth. It's simplified but it's, it's Kind of like this. It's very complicated. How, how, yeah, how, yeah. Long does it, how long does it take to grow what you're holding? For a there? small one like this, it's uh, 12 hours. But in a small carrot like this, you cannot make pieces as big as this one. For these big pieces, we will need to make some bigger growth uh, of this size. May I? Yeah, of course. Good luck. It's oh very my. heavy, be careful Michael, <laughs> very heavy, it's solid. My goodness me, <laughs> I, I thought this looked like a this candle, you know. I like, just tried to move This is a red it. sapphire crystal. This has to be like five kilos. More. I Maybe think. more, yeah. It's that is heavy. crazy. This is because of the density of sapphire and that's why it's uh, one of the hardest material in the world. So you create this to make one Chiron case. This is a slice of a block like this. Right, and that's, out of that they're going to cut a case. And out of that we can make a case. So we, it can either be uh, transparent or tainted in function of what we want. And then we machine a case from that slice. So here you have different types of pieces that we have produced, always from these slices. During the years, I think it went more and more complicated for Jacob because Jacob is a very challenging person <laughs> and he has always... How do you feel about I that? I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> yeah, Jacob is a challenging I'm person. I'm inspired by impossible, you know, that, so... <laughs> that's I exactly. always ask the impossible. He always, do. yeah, that's exactly that. He always wants things more and more complicated. And that's great because like this, we improve ourselves. We get better, we learn many things. We have to develop some processes. And that's very interesting. And, and if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, if there's one minute error anywhere on a case, you discard it and start again. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, that's the complexity of crystal. It's it's a mineral. It's a, it's a kind. It's a stone. It's a very hard material. That's why we cannot scratch it. 
that's why we love it and we use it, but it has no elasticity. So if you make one mistake, the sapphire will break. You have many samples here. This case was full, fully machined and here it's broken on the side. May I see? So it was already started to be polished. But now it's no and longer needed. Right I see that. They go Just to the next one. A shock, maybe hotness, I don't know. Um, but then it's broken. What's the percentage? About 30% loss? At the beginning, it's, uh, I think it's a 50 to 70% loss at yeah. the beginning when we start wow. new pieces. And then, and then we, we get better, we learn. And um, at the end, I think we have a 10 to 30% loss. Right. Right. Is another that's one after they already the studied the whole thing. That, yeah. That's a big one, isn't it? Yes. So that species that you need to pay for because we produced the piece and then it's finally broken. That's part of the cost of the sapphire. Right. This is this complexity and the loss of pieces that we have during the way. How long does it take from start to finish to make the actual finished case? It depends on the complexity, of course. But um, for a Chiron case, we will need between uh, 70 to 80 hours of machining. Really? And then we will need between 40 to 60 hours of polishing. So, so people wonder why these cases, why these watches cost so much money. Right there you've got 150 hours just on machining the case. I mean, that, that's quite, quite something. That's weeks and weeks of work. That's before you even get to the complication. That's before you have anything. That's just the polishing of the case. Crazy. Machining and polishing, yeah. yeah, and at every part, every step, you can break it. And uh, for the polishing, this is a human being polishing it by hand, mostly. So you need to have qualified people with a good touch, a good pressure on the, on the piece. One time, a guy in production, he was polishing a flawless case. It was uh, at the end, everything was done, everything was polished. And for the last operation, it was just a, a washing of the case, he broke the case accidentally oh. and I went to see the guy and uh, Jacob was waiting for the, for the case of course <laughs> so there was a bit of pressure but I, I went to see the guy he was just crying because he spent so much time on it you spend after weeks, weeks and weeks of work in, you spend in the weeks end. on the piece and then you break it so the guy was just crying so you're not going to say uh, okay you are fired or no it's not possible it's just he's trying to make his best it's very complicated. To you know when you hear the phrase it. blood, sweat and tears? Literally. Literal tears yes. go into making this. Tears. Yeah. tears. And it's not a question of, of money, it's, it's more, it, it's, it's hard. It's handmade. If each piece is unique. Sapphire crystal is second hardest mineral after diamond. Right. With a diamond you can scratch it, but nothing else. And I think you're going to ask Jacob, but I, I don't, don't think you have many broken watches. In no, actually, after self-service, so we don't have any broken watches. Really? No. Not really? Not. Until now, nobody came back saying, hey, I broke my Sapphire Crystal watch. No. And the shape helps. The shape helps because um, in, in the way it's uh, conceived, uh, some fragile parts will be protected by other parts. So there is no risk. You are minimizing the risks. I mean, look at the colors. I mean, the red and blue and green. They look like diamonds, like rubies and sapphires and emeralds. This is, uh, I'm look how to fine this them. is. This is gem. Beautiful. That's not fully polished yet. Yeah, but if you see this back of this uh, blue and, and uh, red, you'll see how clear and beautiful. Well, you already saw finished watches like this I have. That's the second model we have developed for Jacob. And it was already much more complicated because it's not a, a, a round shape as you can see it. It's not regular here, everything is symmetric. Here it's not. So it was already hard to machine. And then to polish it, you have all these curved shapes. Right. It's much harder to do curved it's than It's very flat. hard to polish. I'm sure. I'm and sure. again, one complexity of the, of the sapphire is that it's transparent. So if you make some mistakes on polishing on one side, you will see it when you have polished the other side because of the transparency through all the case. On the gold case, you can make whatever you want inside. We will not see it. But here, you see every mistake. So that was already very hard to, to produce this case. 
And then Jacob asked for color. Why don't you show the pink one because that's yeah. fully polished. This one is fully polished. Uh, I'm scared. <laughs> you have here. Amazing, isn't it? The, the crowns, crowns. Sapphire crowns. Coming with it. Is the glass, the sapphire crystal uh, on top attached? Or is no, it? not no, attached. It's, not. it's just it's sitting not. there. Not, not, uh, it's Am not. I being brave? Very brave. Very brave. I wouldn't have done that. Right. I'm going to put it back. So this is how it looked before, uh, and now that's how it is. And I'm going to put it down that's there. That's the rough block, exactly. Yeah. So this one, first step, we, we broke it at the first operation. So that's already not good. So Just making a hole. Waste. <laughs> so that's waste, exactly. And then I have a question for you. So obviously, you know, you make a number of these. You've drilled this hole a number of times. Is each individual carrot different? Does it behave differently? Is one more susceptible to breaking than another? That's a very good question. We have a, um, a factory that produces sapphire. Uh, they are specialized in that. They do that all the year, every day of the year. So they try to make exactly the same carrots with the same exact quantities of everything. But you may have a different behavior of the, the piece when you machine it. Because it's a mineral, it's, it's, a, it's a living part, you know, kind of. Um, and sometimes you don't know why it's, it's breaking. You make the same thing on another part and it, it will not break. Yeah. It may be because of the um, position in the carrot. The low parts are harder than the, than the middle parts. So sometimes if you are working on the part on a slice here, it will behave differently than the slice here. Got it. For example, these are all these types of complexity we can have, and that's why sometimes a, a, a piece can break at the last operation. You have, you never know. There is always a risk of breaking. The last challenge that Jacob asked us, it was for the twin turbo. Here we are mixing every type, every types of polishing, every types of machining because of the shape. You have some straight shapes. We have some curved shapes. We have some facet here. We have all the inside very complicated because of the minute repeater. And with this case, you have the back that is very complicated. Doesn't look like this, but it's very complicated with the, the lugs and everything very hard to produce. And the sides, th sides that will go like this on the side. And this is functional sides because there is a button for the minute repeater. It has to be perfectly um, fitted fit it for, for the case. If the movement is not fitting perfectly, it's again, you throw this case away. That's amazing. Everything is complicated. So it was, I think we've needed maybe one year of development for this case. One year and before um, we see you saw the sample. Study, one year study. Incredible, right? Amazing. And at first you told me it's impossible. And I told first you to keep trying. I told you it was impossible. <laughs> I, don't think, it's impossible. I, I don't think the word impossible is something in your vocabulary, right? I don't know how to spell that. That's how, <laughs> I would define, that's how I would define Jacob too. Nothing is impossible. He wants to try. And now we also launched uh, just now um, uh, ceramic cases. Yeah, ceramic cases. It's the same process as the uh, Same process crystal. from rough ceramic like this. So you have the full block that we use. Uh, and then we make a case like this. Chiron case for Bugatti Chiron. And how is ceramic to work with versus sapphire? Ceramic is, um, is a hard material too, but it's a bit easier easier than sapphire. Okay. And well, the paper. Also, if you chip it and break it, it's uh, garbage. Uh, it's yeah. Uh, same thing, right? Same, same thing. Same you can't repair thing. it. You cannot fix anything. Yeah. But ceramic is more fragile, I would imagine, than sapphire. Um, it's complex. There is always a mix between hardness and fragile. I here it's a bit less hard, so it has a bit more elasticity, so maybe it's harder to break. It's very complicated. It depends on the shock you have on it. It depends on the, the material you are uh, making the shock on. It's very, very hard to say. So the moral of the story is don't bash your million dollar watch, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Seems like a good lesson. Right? Yeah, yeah. Is there any chance we can actually see how this is done? Somebody polishing and making that? We can show you some few things, but not much. You know, it's a very... Top secret. Very secret. We keep uh, 
we keep our knowledge uh, very secret because we have uh, worked so hard on it. It has been years and years of, uh, of uh, development. We will show you, but you cannot be on camera. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we have, to, we have to show our audience something. We'll show. They we'll want to see, Some, we'll right? We'll show something. Excellent. Let's go take a look at the yes. machinery. So a, a lot of what goes on here is actually top secret. I mean, really cl classified. So we're going to be able to show you a few of the rooms and some of the processes that happen, but not all of them. This one here is where they actually wash the products after they've made them. This is crystals, the actual top crystal, and it goes along these conveyor belts into these machines here. I have no idea what's happening in there, probably ultrasonic of some description. It sounds like it, that's yeah. a high pitched. If I was a dog, I would not like this room. No, I don't like it as a human. <laughs> Can so we film down here? No. Crazy, you have no idea, right? I'm, I'm filming your feet because that's all we can show. <laughs> <laughs> So over here, there's secret stuff. There, there's secret stuff. There's someone's feet doing secret stuff. So this machine here, ultrasonic machine, what exactly is it doing? And these machines, we are machining all the cases. So they are, these are the first steps when we come from the big rough slice and we machine everything to make the final shape of the case. And then we will polish, but on these machines, only machining. How much does a machine like this cost? This a machine like this, it's one million, one million per machine. Well, wow. and you have a bunch of them. So again, this is one of those things, people have no idea why watches cost so much money. This process in a machine that costs a million bucks, and it will sit here for who knows how long and go through another 500 processes just on the case alone. It's incredible. I think this is another three days to go. Crazy. So what are we looking at here? Here it's a very traditional machine that we are keeping to make some very special operations like bevels, uh, facets. Um, so it's very old machines, traditional way, and we really want to keep it for these complex operations. What is this lady doing? So here, uh, she's making some hand bevels. She's right now working on this piece. There is a very sharp line here. And she's making bevels by hand uh, because it's uh, small quantities of very technical pieces. And we keep this knowledge to be able to make handmade things, how handmade long, bevels. How long will she be working on this piece? I think she will be working something like three to seven minutes on it to make the bevel on every side of the piece. And then how do you check to make sure the dimensions are perfect and... Ah, then she has some, uh, um, some machines to control with the optical control so that Amazing. to be sure that the dimensions are okay. Amazing. Okay, so we go this way for the cases. Okay. So here is the office of the technical guys. Uh, they make programs for the, the machining to make the shape of the, the sapphire. So it's a very complicated, very touchy programmation. And we will show you the a part of the simulation of machining. So here is um, a simulation. So this is a simulation of how the Chiron case... Yeah, this is a Chiron case. We can see here wow. the shape, the outside shape. It's all programmed and this is the, the tool. So before you have to even press go on one of the machines, you can run it here in a simulation to make yeah. sure it's feasible. First, he has to make many, many runs, uh, fake runs, to see if everything is correct, if he's not missing anything. He's doing if it by no. layer, look at that. How long does it take to program this? In order to program this, we need between two to four weeks. That's crazy. And then you will start to machine. You will break some pieces because the program is not perfect and you correct the program you restart and again you again, keep again. going until yeah. you get it right yeah look it's taking shape that's awesome amazing this is so cool this is so cool this is, so so cool. Amazing. This is the final machining steps so it's even longer you can see it on the simulation mm -hmm. well yeah because the other bit was going all the yeah. way around and now because we're going very fast with yeah. a very big um, uh, size of diamond yeah on the tool and then for the finishing, we have a very thin diamond tool and uh, we go low, very slowly. And this is where it can break as well? Yeah, every step. Crazy. 
I have a whole new respect for these cases. I mean, I, I always knew they were complex, but I had no idea just what, into, what, what went into creating them. This is, this is eye-opening. So there's many parts in here that unfortunately we can't show you, but I'm sure you understand and respect that. It's, it's, it's highly protected information. But what we can show you, this is the Astronomia case being polished. It's its final polish. So again, we have uh, very much a high quantity of knowledge and uh, know-how. So he's making some hand bevels on the very sharp lines, sharp angles that we have on the case. And so that's why again, this can break at this stage as well, correct? Yeah. If, if he pushes too much on the piece, he will make um, yeah, a hole in it. Uh, yeah, he can break it. It's incredible, right? So fun. All right, camera's got to go down. We can't film anything else. Ooh, look at these. These are very subtle. Very subtle today, right? What are you wearing? Jacob and co-producer Michael. What else would I be wearing? <laughs> so this gentleman here, he is doing the final outside case polish. The inside is not polished as of yet, but the amount of steps this goes through. And again, guys, this is the first time that cameras have ever seen this. This is just amazing. We're very fortunate. Big thank you to Jacob for allowing us to bring the, the cameras in and Alexandra, this, this is amazing. So if we, if if we have a close look on the on the piece, um, you can see that he's polishing right now the outside of the, sh of the, the, the piece. So this is shiny. The lugs are shiny, but the inside is not polished. That's why we, we use the black. This is to, to see the, the, the scratches on the oh, polish. Okay. So he's finishing the outside final polishing of the outside and then we start inside on other steps of polishing. And how long will it take? How long is the, the polishing process? 40 to 100 hours of polishing. It depends on the complexity of the piece. Because for, for every face, for every change of face, of shape, you, need, you have one polishing step. So you will have one polishing step for this side one for this side here, one for this side, one for this side, one for this side, one here, one here, one on the top, one on the back, and again, again, again. Every change of shape, there is one specific polishing. Amazing, amazing. I mean, Who would have known, right? Who would have known? When you see them in the boutique, you yeah. know, and you're handling them with gloves, this, yeah. I never want to and touch another says, one without gloves. Says, this watch is a million dollars. Now we know why. I mean, amazing. And this is without the movement. This is the case. <laughs> right? Can you imagine, Adam, the patience that you would have to have to sit there 70 hours to polish the outer section? 70 hours! To put it into perspective, I restored a Zippo lighter that was this big and I had to polish the case. It might have took me 35, 40 minutes. I was so bored by the end of it. I'm, I'm sure, but the precision of this oh, yeah. is Unbelievable. a whole other level. So this is being done with a microscope. Isn't that something? Very, very precise operation of polishing. He's making another bevel, another angle breaking, so that when we assemble the watch, the back of the watch will fit perfectly without sharp, sharp angles because it would be hard to fit the back into the case if you have a sharp angle. So, so what happens in this section here? So here it's the final operations of the production. That's where we make the, the last polishing of the piece. It's a kind of a brushing, brushing the piece with diamond and uh, we are decreasing the size of diamond when we brush it. So it gets finer and finer and finer. Yeah, to get the, the to get finer and finer and to get the full transparency of the piece. Amazing. So it's a very complicated way and different uh, washing between so that to get very transparent pieces. So Michael, all these years, you know, you're 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 an expert, you're a collector, you love watches. But it's your first visit in the factory. How do you feel? It's crazy. I, I had no idea what goes into this. I mean, I'm scared even holding this this case. 70 hours just to polish it, just right. to polish it. Uh, I mean, unbelievable. It, 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 I have a whole new respect 
for yeah. watchmaking. This is this is amazing. So now you know what I do for a living, Michael. Now I do. Excellent. And and guys, we're going to continue this episode. We're going now to another, to, to another factory, and you're going to see how the movements are made. Yeah. And it's very exciting. So you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. We're in it to win it. Jacob, thank you so much for it's my pleasure allowing us well allowing us where cameras have never been before and this is an honor so thank you my pleasure my pleasure thank you bye guys